morning. Good morning, Janet. Hi, how are you? Hi. We're here just to see your story and hear what you've got to say. So, when before all this started, can you just tell everybody how your life was as an individual? Yeah, I was just like a mother bringing up my children. You know, yeah. it wasn't easy. Um, sometimes I was on benefits. Sometimes I'd get a job, and mm -hmm. you know, but I was steadily aware. I had a, uh, you know. No more problems than any ordinary, you know, single mother at that time. And, um, yeah, my kids were grown up healthy and we had a close relationship and things. So, yeah. And it, it and, and how did you feel about the government and the police and, and other institutions? Well, you know, because we had, we had been brought up in care. Yeah. And so I'd already come across, you know, like the institutions. But at that time, I just thought it was... Something that had happened when I was a child and in care, and now that I was able to make my own decisions in life and things like that, that you know, that I've, I've got away from it all. Okay, so when you found out, first found out about your brother, obviously it, it must have been really traumatic, but how did you feel that, um, where did you feel that support was going to come to help you as an individual? Mm, mm. Um, when I first initially found out on that lot, do you know, um, my first reactions was to like scream and shout. Um, and then the fear factor came in because something inside me told me something went right. Um, just the way that we're being treated, I just felt something was the matter. And I really didn't know at that time who was going to help me and who was going to support me or what I was going to do. And, you know, I, I, I tried to get in touch with Amnesty International, but um, they said they only dealt with multiple deaths and things like that. So I was very, very isolated and, you know, I really didn't know where it was going to come from. I just didn't know. Okay. Well, I was fortunate enough to be in the Fire Brigade Union and obviously the trade union movement. And we helped you on that first step. Mm. How did you feel when obviously the trade union got behind you because we pushed you into that conference and obviously yeah. I know you never had no training or anything yeah. and to go and speak in front of hundreds of people, it's not easy. No, I felt as if I had an army <laughs> behind me to say the truth. Um, but I mean, I, of course I was really, really nervous and um, scared and, you know, I probably didn't get everything in the right order when I was talking about things and... Um, a bit confused and I was sweating all the time and um, I, you know I didn't feel very confident in what I was saying and stuff um, but then um, what really kind of filled me with kind of hope and strength is when you bought all my t-shirts and all those DVDs and all the music CDs and that lot and then you, you know you, you booked a hotel for me and um, made sure that I got, you know, really nice meals and stuff like that. And then on the second day, you all came down in all these black T-shirts with Justice for Christopher Alder on and it just, mm. like, looked like a load of ravens or something, you know, like, you know, yeah. all just... And yeah. I just kind of I felt so kind of um, overwhelmed. I was, yeah. you know, and um, I felt... It made me feel better. It made me feel as if I had support and I've got all these big men here, these firefighters <laughs> and that, you know, like supporting me. Um, yeah, um, it, was, it, was a, it was a good feeling, definitely. Well, that was, that definitely. was good. And I think, and that was, I think, one of the important things because it's like the trade union movement understands that there's individuals and when you have to go up against police, state or institutions like this, mm. you need that type of level of support. Um, so obviously on your journey, you know, you had, you started to have some support. There was a lot of momentum, you know, you was getting quite a lot of TV coverage. So how did your journey carry on from that point? Once you start, you know, it started to move. Yeah. I mean, of course, I mean, you can see I lived, you know, away from everybody. So part of me is quite private, you know, as a person, uh, but I did feel a bit exposed that I was getting all this attention and it, it wasn't about anything good that I would had done it was about something so awful and that so that kind of 
made me withdraw with it you know within myself at times um but as things went along because i knew that i had support it gave me a bit more confidence to come out and um yeah to to you know to stand up and speak and and i I'd ne i didn't know anything about trade unions or anything i didn't i didn't mm. even know what they did or you know i weren't part of a union or anything and and mm. i didn't it made me realize just how strong people are when they're together yeah. and um it kind of it encouraged me to move on and i think campaigns do need that kind of support it's you know because if i'd have been on my own they'd have just picked me off yes they would have just yeah. picked me off yeah and everything had been forgotten about but you know they were probably watching me who i was speaking to and things like that now you know to and to think that you know such an organization as the mm. fbu um were there you know it was like a bit of a safety valve for me as well how how do you feel the fact that there has been a number of deaths in the UK at the hands of the police, but you are probably one of the only ones who had an official apology from the Chief Constable mm. and the government. You know, there's so many have gone by the wayside. How do you feel as an individual that you've done something that many have not done? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, a lot of people will say that, but um, when you're coming from the position where I'm coming from, of course, um, because of the lies that they've told me and, the, 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 you know, the revelations that I've had, you know, through it, of course, it just feels like empty words. Um, it's hard to accept that it's empty words. And when we went to the, after going to the European courts, nobody came to me. The government never came to me. This apology was written, you know, like to Liberty, but nobody actually come to me and said, look, you know what I mean, Ms. Holder, we're really, really sorry, or they never, it, it, it wasn't like an acknowledgement. So it would, it would, on paper, but I also thought to myself, well, okay then, now you've acknowledged it, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. yeah, and I thought, well, you had to know about it. You just said, you just told everybody for your own benefit that you're sorry. Yeah, but you're not prepared to do anything about this thing that you've acknowledged is wrong. So um, that didn't, I was unable to move on. Yeah, because it's only with acknowledgement and apology, with the apology and action that you can really kind of move on something. So obviously we've had what's happened with George Floyd how did that make you feel as an individual after what you've been through and now what would you tell his family you know because obviously that has had an impact worldwide Oi. but what would you tell his family about going up against an institution like the police um you see what what i experience is you're not it, it's not just a personal thing once once something like that happens and it's so visible for people to see um, it you then quickly realize that this is not just about you and your family but this is about other people it's it's about trying to prevent it happening to other people and trying to make people aware do you know what I mean um, of what's going on and um, all I can say to the family is it, carry on because you need to, you know, how can you live in a society and allow something like that go on and then have children or grandchildren and not being able to protect them? Um, so I would say get as much support as you can mm. from wherever you can, um, you know, unions speak everywhere to mm -hmm. as many people as possible because i think talking to as many people as possible was massive devolve yeah yeah i don't know these people they've done so much and that if i had not spoke to them i don't know what they could have done to me because that goes through your head yeah. and i think um i would just say to the family carry on 
Yeah, and don't give up. Okay. So for you, <clears throat> obviously, this has been such a long journey. <laughs> And it's take it's 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 obviously taken toll on you. What would what would it need for you to say, look, I've done everything I can. I need to bring this to a conclusion so I can move on with my life. Mm. What would it take? Well, this has become my life. Do you know what I mean? So it's very hard to remember now what I was or where you know because I'm not that person that was before. Yeah. So it's very hard to know what direction and what and. My the with the thing that all the ambitions that I might have had beforehand don't mean anything nowadays. Do you know what mm. I mean? In a strange type of way, I'm not kind of ambitious for anything. Um, but I'm not, I'm, I don't mean that in a negative way. I think it, 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 it kind of shows you what's important and what's not important. And that me wanting to be like a manager of a shop and these type of things is not important. I think I've learnt more like spiritually than yeah. anything else. And I'm, I feel that I'm not walking in a world of illusion, even though it's really been hard and it's kind of smack, you know, taking it to, you know, I've got high blood pressure, I've got asthma, I've lost my hair, I've been through all sorts, I've piled on weight with stress. and um, But despite all that, Mentally, I feel that I don't have to go out there and with all these illusions and all these kind of expectations and and it if anything, it makes life for me a little bit easier, yeah, um because th they couldn't disappoint me any more than what I've been disappointed now. Do you know what I mean? I've seen, I've seen him through. It's it's like one of those things. If you don't know what people are about, you get confused. Mm. But once you know what people are about, you can then mm. it helps you to. Um, what do you say? It helps me to go out there with an attitude where. I have more confidence in me instead of looking at the state or the system to, yeah. you know, to answer things for me or, do you know? Okay, well, this, again, I keep going back that this has been a long, tough journey for you, but the journey, what was the hardest point and the lowest point that you've been on this journey, would you say? The lowest point I've been on this journey is when those police officers walked out free. When we'd, we'd had an unlawful killing verdict at the inquest where nine ordinary men and women had seen the evidence and watched the video and they confirmed everything that I was thinking. Um, and we got an unlawful killing verdict. Oh, and th sorry, th that was m my highest point. I was just up there in the air that, you know, these ordinary people had seen what I'd seen and just done the right thing, yeah? Mm. And I, But then I believed that these officers would get prosecuted afterwards. Mm. And the CPS kept saying, no, no, no. But my solicitor then got the evidence that we needed. But the CPS had set the case so it would fail. So I didn't know this, so when I'm sitting in the court, listening to these things, you know, because they speak in Latin, th language that you don't understand, and, you know, you're sitting there, and I was behind a screen, they had me through, you know, smoke screen, so that I couldn't see the jury and stuff. Um, and because I am so vocal, mm. you know, because when I'd heard about the monkey and chimpanzee noises, I was going mad, yeah, and I would just, you know, just, you know, arguing with them, and don't talk to me like that, how do you think you are, and all this lot, you know, because mm. I was angry, yeah. Um, and then put me in front of the judge, and these police officers had never been in the dock. They were there, but it had been set, so they never even answered one question whatsoever. And because I was questioning them, they put me in front of the police officers in the dock. Um, 
but I, I was with a friend who worked for the National Black Crown Prosecution and she said to me, she said, this case is going to fail. And I didn't understand. I knew nothing about the law or anything like that. And I didn't understand what was going on. And, um, yeah, just sat there and they just said, um, can't put this in front of the jury. Um, you've botched your own case. Uh, these police officers walked free and it was just, I just felt so sick. I felt so, so sick to the pit of my stomach. I thought these piece, people were just going to walk out, just free. And okay. it kind of, everything that you've... You believe about I society. I believe the system, yeah. And it believes the system's and, there to help yeah, individuals. Yeah, yeah. And it just kind of, I thought, oh my God. And then like, you know, just the total disrespect and everything that they showed and stuff. That really kind of knocked me for six. Um, just smashed everything about me. Everything I knew, everything I believed, everything, you know. It's, it's like, it's like being told something and believing it so strongly and then just realizing it's all a lie. And it just, it just shakes you, it just, you know. And I, I went about like that for, for years, still campaigning, um, but just in total disbelief that that this went on in this country. You know, the, the, you see him point the finger everywhere else, look at him, he's doing that, and look yeah. at Saddam Hussein, and look at me, he's doing that, and every, you know. Mm. Um, and you're led to believe that you live in a really democratic, country really safe and and you see kind of it's all just swept under the carpet type of thing so yeah it kind of really did knock me for six what's given you the most support in this journey what do you feel has given you the most support because obviously it's been um in, in what respects, what do you mean? Well, in, in, in all the respects of everything that's happened, obviously you've been there and you're right in the front, but obviously you've got to have people behind you. And who do you feel and what do you feel that's given you the most support for you to carry on this journey? Yeah, I've had Andy and Maggie there, do you know, they've been from the camp, who start helped me start the campaign. Yeah. Um, and the thing is... I've not had much kind of negative backlash to me, to my face and things like that. That's probably because the video was out there. And people, when you see something like what happened with George um, Floyd, you can't deny it. No. You know, once once it's brought to the forefront of people's minds, yeah. they can't deny it. And I keep thinking that's maybe why the police have not gone even heavier on me because they know it's at the forefront of their minds as well. It's been yeah. brought to the forefront of their minds. Um, but it's just ordinary people that have given me support. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unions, people that's been there and believed what I'm saying, do you know, and, and I've not had to convince them. And, you know, they've got more knowledge than me than what's going on, do you know what I mean? And that's the type of thing that's given me support. That's, that's good because it, it had, it did affect a lot of people. You know, when that program was aired first, everybody was like, you know, we, we were traumatised by it, you know. You know, I was chatting to Simon about it and it was like, this is just awful. And it was awful. Yeah. And I think that kind of propels me now to, when I go out there and speak and um, I just make sure that I say it as it is. Yeah. Um, mm. And, you know, they've never come back with any counter arguments or, you know, oh, Miss Aldi, do you not think you're just going on a bit too much now? And do you know what I mean? It didn't happen like that. Or, the, you know, there's been no counter argument or anything. So, um, yeah, so I'll just make sure that I say it as it is and not bothered now about, you know, I don't bother about them the same as what I used to. I still get scared every now and then because yeah. sc I'm more scared of myself, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more scared of me, yeah. you know, because yeah. um, 
I don't have like a cut off point that way and I think it's that but I'm hoping I'm hoping because I were going to after the European court case how you know I were prepared to leave it like that yeah, yeah. but it was they came to me with the evidence about me being spied on. They came to me with the evidence about Chris. So it's not that at that time I was looking for any more. I was, I was, I was saying to myself, right, I'm going to see if I can get a little job, get myself back into work and things like that. But then there it was revealed to me that um, Christopher's body was in the mortuary. It was revealed to me that I'd been spied on, even though I'd known I'd been getting spied on. So they kind of triggered it off again, not not me. And I thought, well, sometimes things come out, well, definitely when it when it's unexpected, you know, because I didn't expect, you know. So um, mm. yeah. So just to like round thing, like what type of support would you like from individuals, peoples, trade unions, or whatever? for you to carry on this campaign? Yeah, well, um, as I say, I need to, for start, I need to raise some funds from a book. Um, mm. I need, uh, I think, I need about 10 grand from a book. And um, I'd like them to invite me to speak at these things and help me publish, you know, get my book out and things yeah. like that. Um, and just keep the momentum of everything going, not let this movement go now. These trade unions need to be on side and they need to show these young ones and, you know, guard them and, you know, like, yeah. you know, because get them to join these unions and, you know what I mean, give them some encouragement and to keep going and stuff. And that's, that's what I'd like to see.